that's what it is. Said to know the end of all flesh is come up to glory. For the earth is filled with violence. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, I'm certain that that is not the only thing on earth that came from. That's strong. Who said it's going to come to high hand? And there are things that are horrible to God's sense of man. Terrible old company of three old but some old five old and sin has an old sin has an old about now violence is a thing that consistent throughout the world of God against that, that God hates. God hates violence. And when you see the things that are going on in our world, in our city, of this country, the violence that exists, God hates it. God hates it. I, I see videos and I don't see one of them. And I think Violence through them. And behold, God said, I will destroy them with the earth. I will destroy them with the earth. Now you had Enoch. Enoch was not. God took him. He had a son named Methuselah. Methuselah means when he dies, it shall come. When he dies, it shall come. And uh, it was like his name itself was a very prophecy of the flood. Enoch was a man who knew God, walked with God, and was taken home to heaven without dying. Lamech was Methuselah's son in the line, and Noah was uh, the son of Lamech. Lamech. Now his daddy died in the flood. Every reason to believe that he died in the flood, the timeline is this, that Noah's dad died in the flood. It may well be that his granddad died in the flood. Now, of course, Enoch did not. Uh, but uh, at least the year of Methuselah's death was the year of the flood. And whether he died in the flood or before the flood, we don't know. But realistically, Lamech died in the flood. Uh, it just figures out it's that way. Now Noah was preserved. Let's look first of all at Noah's faith. Noah's faith. In chapter 6, again, back up just a little bit, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, I'm going to take time to do this. This is Sunday night. We take time in the Word of God, more so perhaps to turn and read and more of a teaching type thing than a Sunday morning. 
But I want you to go to the book of Hebrews to that faith chapter, to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And whenever you come to Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 7, we have the beginning of Noah. And for he, by faith, first two words, verse 7, Hebrews, by faith, Noah. And whenever it says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, grace is always found by faith. That's how grace is found. You don't find grace by work. You don't find grace because you are righteous. You find grace by faith. And uh, so Noah found grace by faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, anywhere you want to go, other places. By grace are you saved through faith. It's just the principle of God. It must be so. God says his grace is given in response to faith, it is, in fact, it says in Romans chapter 4, verse 16, marvelous, marvelous verse, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Because God's extension of his loving favor is never according to works. Now, does he reward works? Yes, he rewards works. But, he does not extend grace because of works. He extends grace. It's just by definition. The word grace itself demands that it not be by work. If it's by works, it's no more of faith. And if it's of faith, it is not of work. They are mutually exclusive. Just by definition. Now, Noah was a man of faith. I want you to think about his faith. He simply believed God. You know there are a lot of people who believe in God and don't believe God. They believe there is a God. They believe that he exists. But they don't believe what he said. You can tell that by the way they act. They don't believe what he said. But Noah not only believed in God, he believed God. Whenever Paul was on that ship and then the storm came in Acts chapter 27, the storm came and he said, he stepped forward. After he had told them, let's don't sail, let's don't go out on the sea. We're, we're going to have problems. It's going to be trouble. And, and they said, you're a preacher. What do you know about anything? What do you know about sailing? What do you know about meteorology? What do you know about that? You're a preacher. Just shut up and get on the ship, you know. And he said, wherever he came out in the middle of the storm, wherever he came out, he said, you should have listened to me. I love it. I love it. I love it that he said. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't say, well, now, fellas, you know, I tried to, you know. No, he said, you should have listened to me. Now he said, I'm going to tell you how to live. I'm going to tell you how to escape this. And they listened to him. They listened to him that time. They learned they should have listened the first time. But whenever he stepped out, he says, Sirs, I believe God that it shall be even as he has said. Young people, if you could just learn to believe God. Older people, if you could just learn to believe what God says. Just believe what he says. Us old folks, we need to believe God. Go to the bank, get all your money out of the bank. Get all your money, get your money out of the bank. You know? Be not dismayed whatever be done. God will take care of you. If you have fifty dollars in the bank and you go down there and they say, "Let me see your hand. Let me see if you got a mark in there. 
If you don't have that mark in your hand, you can't get your money. I don't have that mark in my hand. Okay. You're not going to get your money, okay? And God's going to take care of me another way. God's going to take care of me. He's committed to that. I'm his kid. I belong to him. He's responsible for me. Believe God. Sirs, I believe God that it shall be even as he has said. Do you know it took a it took a bit of faith to build a boat away from land and tell people that it was going to rain when it had never rained on the earth? Now, according to the word of God, first chapter of Genesis, it had never rained on the earth. That the earth was watered with a dew. It was a whole different ecosystem. A whole it was a beautiful system. It was a wonderful system. Absolutely magnificent. Every day was just like the day. <laughs> it was absolutely perfect. It was like that all over the world. All around the globe. It was like that. But he says it's going to rain. God's going to destroy this earth. God has told me. I want you to understand, they had to believe him. They didn't have it written down in a book like you do. Like I do, preserved for all these thousands of years. They didn't have that. They had to take him at his word. And he said, God has spoken to me. God told me it was going to be that way. And they laughed at him. What a man of faith. They mocked him, made fun of him. Oh, that's silly. Same thing they said. They said, whenever in, we look in 2 Peter chapter 3, there's the promise of his coming. They said, what do you mean it's going to rain? Where's the promise? God said that. Where's that promise? That's not going to take place. What is wrong with you, old man? Good night, look at you. But his voice felt kindly for him. I don't know if his granddaddy helped him build the boat or not. I don't know whether his dad helped him on the boat or not. I don't know whether he did. Maybe his mom and dad sat home at night and thought, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. No, no, it just lost his mind. He has just gone crazy on this religious stuff. I don't know what we're going to do. We need to get him some help. We really need to get him some help. You know, they wouldn't convince him to go see the psychiatrist. You know, he's just gotten old. But he believed God. By faith. By faith, Noah prepared an ark. Everybody laughed. Everybody mocked. I mean, you know, good thing. I want you to look back at all his faithfulness and you'll see what they mocked. What they mocked. In his faithfulness. In, in, uh, in chapter 6 of uh, Genesis, look down in verse 22. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So did he. Would to God that were true of my life. Now, I believe God. I have faith in God. I believe God that it would be even as he has said. But I wish that it could be said of my life according to all that God commanded. I've done it. All that God commanded. I've done it. That's his faithfulness. His faithfulness to the Word of God. He didn't know how to build an ark. He'd never seen an ark. He'd never been to an ark building seminar. He didn't know about that. But he did what God told him to do. Though he never knew anybody who had built an ark. He had no earthly pattern to go after. He had no mentor in ark building. He simply did all that God had commanded him to do. It was a difficult time to obey God. It was a time of violence. It was a time of wickedness. It says the thoughts of men were only evil continually. They didn't think about 
anything but evil things continually. What a terrible, terrible day to live in. We complain about the day we live in. But I'm going to tell you right now, it was not an easy time to live for God in the world. There was nothing easy about it. And he had a hard task. He had a hard task. It was hard labor. Have any of you been to uh, up in Kentucky where they have the ark experience? Where this guy's built a full size replica of the ark? Y'all been there? That's a huge thing, isn't it? Can you imagine doing that with no power tools? Can you imagine doing that with hand labor open? I can't imagine. That was a hard task. It was a big task. It took a long time to do it, too. I don't know whether they hired laborers or not. I, I don't know about that. The tools they used would not be very efficient. He had no experience. And then, can you imagine, can you imagine getting all those animals I don't know whether he trapped them or, uh, or whether they were tame. Uh, it's very possible that they were tame. He just, you know, he had to take one uh, each, male, male or female of, of every one of the animals. He had to get that right. He had to get that right. Couldn't have on that. Or whether God just brought them to the ark and got them to go in. I can't get my dog to go in the fence, much less go in the ark. <laughs> and uh, uh, maybe he enticed him like I have to be. <laughs> but he was faithful. Faith. We're pilgrims on a journey. On a journey. And those who've gone before us line the way, cheering on the faith, encouraging the weary. Their lives are stirring testimony of what God has done. Those who have gone before us, I think of those who have gone before us. You ought to think of those who have gone before you. Now, whether you come from a heritage of Christian family or not. I'm not from a heritage of Christian family, though my dad was, of course, saved, and my mom was saved. She had somewhat of a Christian heritage. Daddy had no Christian heritage whatsoever. But in my life, I have so many that I've been around that have gone before me. And so many that I have to look to, to count on, and and, and to think about those who go, then I think of my responsibility. I think of my responsibility. And the song continues like this. Oh, may all who come behind us find us. Thank you. I used to think about my kids. I want my kids to see in my life faithful. Now I think about my grandkids. Old grandkids see my life is faith. And great, great grandkids. I want to be found faithful. Most of all, I want God to see faith in my life. Now he sees my faith. But I want other people to see my faith in my faithfulness. You see that? That's what Ham, Shem, and Japheth saw in their father. They saw his faithfulness. I don't think they really understood. I don't know what kind of confidence they had in God. I don't know. But they had enough respect for their daddy. Whenever he said, get your wife and let's get in the ark. They got their wife. They got the ark. They believed him that much. And he had that much influence. 
I'd like to have that kind of influence in my family. It's the third thing I want you to look at. I want you to look at his family. His family. We looked at Enoch, his great grandfather, Methuselah, his grandfather, Lamech, his father. He had a wife. And then he had three sons and their wife. Now, I want you to know that his sons were old enough to be married. Uh, they did not have children. There's no indication that his sons had children. But I want you to know, in the family, there was no argument. There was no argument about evolution. No argument about what that whatsoever. I mean, there, there was too much testament, first-hand testament. Now, I'm going to tell you, whenever Noah was born, simply because of the longevity that is given in the timeline, it's possible that Adam would have still been living. Now, we don't know that for sure. There's some variations in the timeline. But, I mean, it was that quick. Can you imagine how quickly man went away from God after creation in a perfect setting, in a perfect environment, with a perfect parity? How quickly man went away from God. I can't, I, I can't fathom that. Some of that had to do with longevity. Sometimes whenever we get old, we do not do well when we get old. Old people sometimes do dumb stuff. <laughs> but anyway, they went so quickly with them. Can you imagine Adam and Eve talking after Cain had killed Abel? Can you imagine them sitting together at a meeting, talking, and Eve, when you, why, why did we do this? Look what has happened. Look what has taken place. And then look what took place immediately in a few generations. In just a few generations. Till their wickedness has come up before me and violence fills the earth and I'm going to destroy the earth and all the people with it. But Noah by faith, Noah found grace. And he was faithful in doing what God had for him to do. <laughs> I simply want you to notice in verse 13 of chapter 7 of the book of Genesis, verse 13. In the self same day entered Noah Shem and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his son, with them into the ark. Now, in this, I want you to see Noah as a type of Christ. Everyone went into the ark, went in because of their relationship with Noah. It's always it's Noah, his son, his wife, Noah's sons, Noah's wife, and Noah's daughters-in-law. doesn't say it like that, but the wives of the son of Noah. It's all because of their relationship to him. What an impact. What an impact he had uh, with them. Now, they all had faith. I don't know what degree their faith was. I don't know what their faithfulness was. Uh, it was not all as good as we'd like for it to have been, but they all had faith. So I want you to see that about Noah. First of all, his faith. Then I want you to see his faithfulness. Number three, I want you to see his family. You look at that. Noah's faith, Noah's faithfulness, Noah's family. I want you to look at something that, and I use uh, the same letter to begin the word, just to help me and to help you if you want to remember I want you to see Noah's frustration. It had to be frustrating to go home at night after spending a day working on something that he didn't know how to do 
and didn't know what he was doing, and sometimes wondering what he was doing, and the only thing he could say is, God told me to do it, and I'm doing it. What's that old story about the guy pushing a rock? Push a rock. Every day, go up, push a rock, push a rock, push a rock, push a rock. Every day, get up at that point, go out and push a rock. Somebody said, what are you doing? He said, I'm pushing this rock. He said, what are you doing? He said, God told me to push it. He said, why? I don't know why. He said, God just told me to push it. After a couple of years, somebody came by and said, how long have you been pushing it? I said, I've been pushing it two years. He said, it hadn't moved an inch. He said, God didn't tell me to move it. He just told me to push it. <laughs> and so, you know, I just push it. I just push it. Now, I know that's, that's, I know that's just a story. But it's an illustration of a truth. And here he is. He's just doing that. He's just doing it. And he comes home at night. And his wife said, well, how'd it go today, Norm? Oh, man, it seems like I took one step forward and two steps back. You ever been like that? I said, this seemed, this seemed like it didn't get anything done at all. But will they back come by and see you? Oh, he said, yeah, a whole bunch came by. They stood around, you know. They stood around, gave me advice, and laughed at me. He said, what did you say? She said, what did you say to him? I told him. I told him judgment is coming. God's going to judge you people. God's sick and tired of the way you're acting and what you're doing. God's not going to have any more of it. God's going to destroy it, and if you don't get right, if you don't believe God and get in this ark, you're going to be destroyed with this earth. God's going to destroy the earth. Well, how, how, how's that going to happen? Well, there's going to be rain come down from heaven. Water is going to come down from heaven. <laughs> Who ever heard of such a thing? Who ever heard of that? Nobody had ever heard of it. But what he did, he just kept doing what God gave him to do. But frustration. Frustration. Now I don't know whether you ever get any frustration in what you do and try to do for God or not. If you don't, though, you don't try to do much. But if you try to do much, you'll be frustrated with what you're trying to do for God. I mean, you work hard, prepare a Sunday school lesson, nobody shows up. Why do I even do it? Why do I even bother with it? I mean, you work, get ready for something and everything, you know, do everything you can the way you believe God wants you to do it the best you can and try to do everything you can to do the right thing in that thing, and then it just falls apart. You say, why do I even mess with it? Why do I even mess with it? You try to live for the Lord and read your Bible and you try to tell somebody about Jesus, and they say, oh, come on, you know, go on. Get that preaching somewhere else. I don't want to hear it. Why do I even bother with it? Now, Noah did that for 120 years. I don't know that, I don't know that he ever had anybody that came by and said, Noah, I just want you to know. I appreciate what you're doing. Nobody gave him a word of encouragement. He said, no, I really don't know what this is all about, but I'll tell you what, man, it looks like it's coming along pretty good. You've made some progress. I really appreciate that. Looks like you're doing it. He didn't have anybody to do that. The only comments he heard were negative Comments. I'm sure he was more spiritual than I am. <laughs> but that would be so frustrating. So frustrating. Come to number five. Number five. Noah's freedom. I want you to look at chapter 8. I'm going to read some verses in chapter 8. I'm going to read verses 15 through 19. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou, thy wife, thy son, and thy son's wife. See that relationship to Noah? 
it's spoken, they're spoken of in relation to. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, a fowl, cattle, creeping thing that creeps upon the earth, that they may breed and multiply, uh, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his son's wife with him. Every beast, every creepy thing, every fowl, whatsoever creeps upon the earth after their kind, went forth out of the ark. And when he got out of the ark, in verse 20, the first thing he did was build an altar. He built an altar. Now I want you to know, whenever he built that altar, nobody nobody came by and said, <laughs> that's a little religious, isn't it? Nobody said that. Wasn't anybody to say that. Now, I don't know how much land Noah owned before the flood, but when it was over, he owned all of it. <laughs> I mean, there were no fences. You couldn't, you couldn't look any way that Noah said, yeah, I'd go over there if I want to. I'd go there if I want to. I'd go over there if I want to. I'd go over here. There's nobody. I mean, he had complete freedom. He could worship. He could pray. He could live wherever he wanted to. Why? Because he did all that God had for him to do. Now, I can take time to talk about this, but whenever he entered the ark and God sealed the ark, he sealed it to sail even as a submarine. I mean, it was not, water was not going to come in. God shut the door. God checked it all out, and it was sealed top to bottom, side to side, and they went in, and God shut the door. The door so tightly shut that they didn't even open the door to get out. They went out through the top. They took the roof off of it. They took the top off of it. Went out that way. So well, how'd that work? I don't know, but it worked. They probably tell you about that. At the, at the Ark of Security. They'll probably tell you all about that. Now, whenever he entered into that, just like whenever we entered in Christ, whatever we have down here, Whenever we enter into Christ and we sail through the storm, we come out the other side. We're free in Christ. The treasures of earth are not mine. I hold not a, I hold not in silver, gold. but a treasure far greater is mine. I have riches of hope. I like the old song that says, I'm a child of the king. A child of the king. With Jesus my faith, I'm a child of the king. You got it? Here it is. Noah's faith. Noah's faithful. Noah's family, Noah's frustration, but then Noah's free. Noah's free. Enjoy. Enjoy what you're doing in spite of the frustration. Follow God. Be able to say, and may it be said of us, what was said of Noah. He obeyed all that God had commanded. Now, if you're not obeying all that God has commanded you, tonight this is for you. This is for you. Do what God says. We'll say, how do you know what God says? Let me tell you something. If you do everything God says here in this book, if you do everything you know from this book, God will tell you and lead you by his Holy Spirit to all those things that are specific for you that are not in this. 
He'll do that. He'll make that clear. He'll make it plain. Whenever God called Noah to build an ark, he didn't tell him everything how it was going to finish. But he taught him as he went. He taught him how to lay the beam. He taught him how to fit the planks together. He taught him how to take that ark and see it inside and the outside. I don't think he told him that until it's time to do it. Time to do it. Everybody wants to know, what am I going to be doing 10 years from now? Don't worry about 10 years. Worry about now. If you do every day what God wants you to do every day, 10 years from now, you'll still be doing what God wants you to do if you just do it. Just do today what God wants you to do. Then do tomorrow what God wants you to do. Then do the next day. Whenever you're, how old are you, Adeline? You look eight? How many? Ten? You're ten years old. You can't be ten years old. Okay. If you're ten years old, just do all God wants to do when you're ten years old. How old are you? How many? You're not saying it. You've got too much gum in your mouth. You're 10 also. Another 10-year-old. You're how old? You're four. Wouldn't it be great from four years old to 10 years old? Abigail, you're 12. Aren't you? To 78. Just year by year, day by day, do what God wants you to do. Let's stand together. Lord, I thank you so much for examples that you give us.